This is why you always change your oil if you ever do any type of intake work, cam work, head work. Look at that. Wow. I can feel it pulling the, uh, the lifter up. Well, let's listen and see what happens. Oh, did you hear that pop? That's a good thing. You don't want to force the cam in. So me and Andrew have been kind of looking around here, trying to figure out what's going on. Just pass the camera by. I hope that you can see the roller tip and the valve. So here's the deal. We feel like the guide plates are off center enough because you can look at these rockers and tell that they're out of alignment. Now, most rockers will have some sort of cant to them. It's just, I'm not going to say it's normal, but it's common. But this is pretty excessive, especially these last two cylinders right here. So we think that it's causing the edge of the rocker right here to hit because of that. And that's probably where we're getting some of our tapping from. As a matter of fact, I think it's this one back here. So we think that's the problem. And if you look down here, push rod is just completely riding on the guide. So there needs to be like a minimum of five thousandths tolerance gap uh, on each side of that push rod now if i'm being honest with you i've never really worried about that i just kind of center it up and usually that's good we got our packages in uh actually i got crager hold on i got crager behind the camera look at that my son come down from uh from uab to visit so very very glad to have him here today but we're going to go ahead uh open up these boxes adjustable guide plates so a lot of you already know how these work. Some of you don't. Uh, I'll go into more detail once we put them on the car. But basically just like a puzzle. They lock in, they allow uh, basically to move back and forth. And uh, once you're done, you can tack weld them into place. That way they don't move around. But the valve springs, all these come from uh, Anderson. These are the high rev valve springs. These are good for like 600 lift. They're awesome. These are the same ones that we ran on uh, Andrew's car. Uh, except for they were they were for stock heads, but uh, same lift capability and all that if I'm not mistaken And here's all of our retainers We have one oddball retainer on the car. So I wanted to go ahead and get a new set um, And our locks Right here. Okay. This is the Anderson tap it tools Okay, so what these do is these drop in through your push rod hole and they basically attach themselves Let me just show you right here for reference they drop down through the push rod hole and they attach themselves somewhere right there okay and then you pick the lifter up and then you use this wing nut right here to lock it down so it'll kind of hold and won't won't fall that's how these work i've never used them i've always been intrigued by them though i think they're super cool and what these allow you to do is not have to pull your intake off uh, so that's really really cool and for me it actually makes it so that I don't have to take my heads off because these link bars uh, on this setup will not come out. They hit the heads. So the, this is this is gonna be awesome right here. I'm very excited about those. Hopefully they work out. We don't know. Matter of fact, Donnie B at Anderson Motorsports, whenever I was talking to him, he was like, hey man, uh, let me know how that works because we've never heard anybody using the link bars. Okay, and over here is ah, what I'm so excited about. I've been wanting this thing forever. And here it is, guys. Anderson N412 camshaft uh, will be going in the car because I want more sound, and I think that'll work out good. This is what Donnie B recommended that we put in the car anyway. So I'm probably gonna have to break this video down into a, a couple different ones. And the reason being is like, I really wanna show you guys how to use the Tappet tool. I want to at least cover me doing one of these springs. I don't know, we could probably get it done in one video, but we'll see how it goes. If it drags on, we'll separate it into two videos. But uh, I'm gonna keep this as streamlined as possible because I have a lot of work to do to get this car ready. I'm gonna show you guys how these tappet tools work. Uh, Prager's gonna video a little bit. I'm sorry, I know it's loud with the fan going in the background, but it's hot today, so we have to have it. Now, I've never used these before. So, and I've honestly never seen anyone use them, so I'm just kind of guessing here on this. So we'll drop them in through the hole here until we make contact. 
And with these being link bars, I'm pretty sure we're gonna have to pull them up at the same time to get them to come up. Yeah, we grabbed it, but let's see. Guys, look at that. I can feel it pulling the, uh, the lifter up. And I guess we just run them down. They should be somewhat even, so that'll kind of tell us. Guys, I don't know. I'm, I've never used these things before, so I'm not going to pretend like I I know. Oh, see, that one didn't grab the center of the lifter. It grabbed around the edge, which I don't guess it matters. And this one grabbed the center of the lifter, so. Let me see if I can. There we go. Guys, that's pretty freaking sweet right there now. I'm not going to lie to you. Look at that. I think that'll work. You can feel the tension on the, the lifter. So when you go to pull this up, you obviously can feel that it's pulling the weight of the lifter. So you know you're still attached. And if you look closely in the, in the hole, you can see to verify that you are on the lifter. So, yeah, that's pretty damn cool. I like it. So... Shout out to Anderson uh, on the hat, man. This worked easier than I thought it would. So I'm gonna go ahead and set you guys up in a time lapse. I'm gonna do some work up until uh, I can think of another pointer or another tip to give you. How about that? Moment of truth, is this gonna work? So this is what it looks like uh, with these things. They're they're pretty, this is sweet. I'm not gonna lie to you, this is real sweet. So everything's attached, uh, should be pulled up enough. Guys, I literally reached down to grab the cam and it already started coming out. So I know that this is gonna work. Look at that, look at that shit. Ah oh, man, is that not freaking amazing? All right, and that's about how far you can go. Almost able to get the camshaft out, right, with the condenser. So that's why you need to just go ahead, don't take the risk, and just pull your condenser out, so. So we are evacuated now. So these things can be really aggravating, but how they work is they, they clamp on right here, they just slide on, and you have to push them up into this little spring-loaded groove. And the way I like to do this is spin it around if you have the room to, and then push in on what you're trying to pull out, and then twist and turn. Very, very aggravating, guys. I'm not going to lie to you. Well, let's see if we can rotate it. Sometimes you can do that. There we go. Right. It's not pretty, but that gets it up out of the way. And uh, all we need to do is reach down and pull the camshaft out. So since that thing doesn't want to come out, Craker, if you will, just stand back. Mm -hmm. There we're here. All right, we're just gonna ease this camshaft out. There it is. Thing looks pretty good on the cam. Normal wear. Lubed up nice. Good deal. Trick flow stage one camshaft is out. Sure it's seated. All right, so here we go, guys. A little bit of lube. Okay, so our GoPro died. Uh, well, it got too hot, actually. That's how hot it is out here. Uh, anyway, what I was gonna say is uh, I've used just regular motor oil on this. Uh, if your engine's kind of already broken in and uh, you want to slap a new cam in, a lot of times you can just use 
a good motor oil, but uh, this is the uh, sealed power engine assembly stuff. So let's go ahead and get this cam in. All right, guys, and here it is. We're just gonna meander this thing in. the cam in that's one thing you do not want to do you want to make sure that the cam is good and level and it'll just slide in uh, you're probably gonna have to have a bolt or something else once you get down here to that last yeah, yeah. okay so what you're gonna to do now is use a screwdriver or a bolt uh, screwdriver for the sake of this they make tools for this but you don't have to have it take a screwdriver and press up and there it is cool we now have a new camshaft in the front. I'm probably going to just fast forward until we get to the valve spring install portion because there's nothing left to do here but put the timer chain on this thing and uh, hope she sounds good catch you guys in a few so we are now installing the valve springs on the car. So me and Papa T are gonna show you how to do this. It's a very simple job. Um, first things first, you need to have air. Okay, now we've already done one. I'm gonna show you how to do the other here. All right, what you're gonna need is some type of hose. You can build these yourself. You can do whatever you want to. Just get you something, you can rent these from O'Reilly Auto Parts. And the deal is there also, if you'd like to keep it, you can just keep it and they'll charge you the full amount um, instead of just like renting it and giving you money back. So that's a, a good tip. But anyway, uh, you just screw this into the spark plug hole and you put about 60 pounds, 80 pounds of air, something like that in it and you're good to go. So here's how it goes, guys. They usually, a hose will find its way in. Mm -hmm. uh, that's usually how we do a spark plug if it's in a bad spot. Yeah. Put a vacuum line on the end of the spark plug, tip the spark plug and get in there. All right. You're gonna hear some air, that's fine, that's normal. All right, and if somebody's helping you, just make sure that you've got it centered as good as you can. But let's listen, see what happens. Oh, did you hear that pop? That's a good thing. So all you wanna do here is just separate your locks. All right, so we're gonna use these little tappet tools here. Um, all you gotta do is just get your lock out of the way. Now, some of these things will be in a bind. You see, I'm kinda of trying to work quick here because this isn't the easiest thing. All right, uh, I'll center him up a little better. There you go, right there. And usually, they'll just pull right out, okay? Once you get your locks off, uh, you can pretty much release it. Now the problem you're gonna have is you're not gonna get this nut off by hand. So have something handy to go ahead and release this nut, because you're gonna have tension on it. Pull off your old spring. Here you go, your retainer. All right, so we're just gonna drop everything on. Get your tool. Hey guys, I'm only going to show you this one because it's getting hot in here. We got to turn this fan back on. Ready? Yeah. Okay, and typically you go in from the high side. Oops. No, that's right. Go in from the high side first. That's probably what it was. Okay, ease up. There we go. And once you get your spring on, you can pull this thing off by hand. All right, guys, that's it. That's how you put your new springs on. Just remember where you started and stopped. Uh, so we stopped right there. So this one's next. That's it. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get these valve springs on. We're going to button this thing up. We already got our camshaft in. Uh, I want to show you how we're doing these guide plates. So Papa T had to come in and grind these things. Hell, it's weird. It's only on a few of them, though. Look, yep. it's only on them, too. We didn't have to grind those. So what happens here is these guide plates, if you can see it, hit the top of this head. These are our AFR guide plates. We just had to modify the top of them and grind them down a little bit. Right at the top. So right across the top, we just kind of ground them down a little bit so that they wouldn't interfere. What we didn't realize is we didn't actually have to do it on any, well, on those two at least. Yeah. Hard to show, guys. Just kind of be patient. So you'll get these things locked in kind of like a puzzle piece, and then you'll just drop your studs in. And then the next step is honestly 
really the most crucial part because this is what's going to matter. Okay, so what I do here before you tighten up your studs, just drop your push rods in like this. Okay, and you kind of want to look to make sure everything is center. See how these push rods will move, right? You want to make sure they're center of this stud as good as possible. And then what I'm going to do just for reference is go ahead and drop on two of these. Now these aren't tight and they're not going to go all the way down yet. I just want to make sure we're in the right vicinity of where we need to be. Right about in there. I just need to make sure that these, because see some of these will have to rotate a little. Like this particular intake valve will actually be offset just slightly. And you'll need to go ahead and know that right off the bat. So what that's telling me is we need to go this way, okay, on the valve. And what that's gonna do is you need the push rod to go the opposite way, see? We need it to go this way. All right, so push it over, lock it down. All right, and this one over here seemed to be pretty happy where it was. Okay, throw this back on. guys that looks pretty freaking good now you're going to notice that this particular rocker is slightly canted um, that's what you have to have because you want this roller tip to be fully engaged with the tip of the valve and if this thing was sitting straight then it would actually be hanging off the valve like that right so we need it to kind of cant over this way a little bit and i think that's going to be pretty good it's going to be about as good as we can get it right there so there you go guys you just lock everything down from there you should be good that's how i'm setting up the guide plates if something changes once we actually put some preload on them and we get this thing started up if i need to make any changes i'll let you guys know if this worked out perfectly i'll just leave it in the video for you all right guys here we are i just wanted to give you a quick update of how much more straight now all of your rockers are uh whenever you use the adjustable guide plates now i'm gonna be honest with you i think this i'm not gonna say this fixes the problem but this motor's gonna be a lot more happy look how square everything is right the way these rockers sit look completely different and i think this is going to help free up this engine plus these valve springs now having new ones um, with the new guide plates and obviously the new cam i cannot wait to hear this damn cam you think it's gonna sound good pop it's gonna sound good <laughs> anyway i'll pick back up with you guys once we bust this thing off we're probably about 30 minutes away all right so quick tip uh, most of you guys know this but this is why you always change your oil if you ever do any type of intake work cam work head work anything like that because we were completely unaware that we got so much water in here but look at that that's straight water that's coming out of here guys so always look at that look at that wow. that's how much water got in the bottom of this thing right there that's why it's important to do an oil change uh, anytime you're doing any work like this because i promise you it will pour water in there and you'll be surprised so no big deal as long as you didn't spin the motor over or anything like that or try to run it, it it's fine the water will go to the bottom just let it drain out good put some fresh oil in here anyway and a lot of people have been asking what kind of oil i run uh this was a recommendation by joe nate uh it's got high zinc and this is the uh, valvoline vr1 2050 now not everybody's gonna need a 2050 it's good oil uh, if you guys want to run it it's got high zinc as you can see all right let's go ahead and do this we'll get back to you in just a minute and we'll try to bust this thing off Shout out to Anderson Ford Motorsport, those freaking tap it tool things. That, those things were badass. That's bad. Those were freaking cool. Bad. That helped us out so much. Now, once again, fingers crossed, guys, because uh, I don't know, we could have missed something. I'm sure we did. I'm sure we missed something. All right, first off, we're going to check for gas leaks. Good. Good to go. All right, here we go, guys. Pop T, you ready to go home? Yeah, I'm picking the wrong room. Yeah. All right, guys, this <laughs> is it. We got water in the car. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and fire it up. I will tell you this, we did run it a little bit longer earlier and the valve train seemed to kind of quieten down. 
So uh, anyway, let's go ahead and bust this thing off. Let it heat up. Oh yeah, Andrew's here by the way. What up? If you can't smell him. <laughs> smell good. like we have won the battle with the carbon fox we got rid of all of our valve train noise everything seems to be good the cam sounds good i'll include a little clip that i have where i was explaining on uh, instagram to you guys what was going on with the car that's probably the best clip that i have of it now that we've somewhat got it adjusted out car will need a custom tune leach motorsports will be tuning the car for some reason i can't nail down the idle on this thing sometimes it's good sometimes it isn't car needs to be tuned we're going to handle that Either way, though, this Anderson cam sounds freaking phenomenal, and we have zero valve train noise. I want to leave you guys with this. Ever since we've been dealing with this car, everyone has told me that valve train noise is normal. Like, you're going to hear roller rockers or just live with it. Guys, you don't have to live with it. Something is going on. Either you have a lifter problem or either it's like a guide plate issue, a valve train geometry uh, meaning they're out of alignment on the tip of your valve or either your push rod length is too long guys there's a lot of different things that it can be but i'm willing to bet that a lot of you guys are having issues with your guide plates being misaligned okay so look at that make sure that your rockers aren't canted to the side i'll go ahead and put a picture up right here of what it looks like when they're off center this is not what you want i'm probably going to split this video up into a couple different small segments and repost them on youtube for you guys to show how to use the tap it tool how to do your valves how to do your guide plates how to do your springs and things like that all right guys i'm gonna go ahead and wrap this one up and as always thanks for watching